Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of Beam Tips and Beam 12 Backup Mobile Application Tips and Tricks. Um, today I wanted to show you how you can add an additional proxy to your Beam Backup and Replication. And previously I was talking in one of the videos of a little about it, but proxies are very important in Beam because thanks to them you can actually speed up the uh, working processes of your Veeam and your Veeam jobs quite a lot. So as you can see now I'm in the backup proxies. So we, I'm in backup infrastructure, backup proxies and here are my backup proxy. The basic one that was actually created where, when I installed Veeam. So if we go here to our properties, as you can see we got here some uh, traffic rules that you can set up of course if you want and on the server side we got max concurrent tasks which is 2 so as you can see I can only choose 2 tasks because I have only 4 CPU cores here on this virtual machine of course if you have like uh, let's see uh, okay has sufficient CPU resources for CPU cores so basically how many tasks I could actually change to let's see if I can change it to 4 that's fine but I cannot probably if I would take 5 it would be too much so it depends how many cores do you have if you have 16 cores or even more then you can have more concurrent tasks but going back to the proxy, let's check uh, the properties here. So as you can see, here are uh, the basic uh, options uh, that are set of, uh, for my proxy. So we got here the transport mode, which is very important here. So basically the transport mode is responsible uh, in your Veeam for sending uh, your data. So how your data is going to be sent uh, to Veeam and how your jobs are gonna perform so as you can see my transport mode at this moment is network transport mode which is probably not the best idea because I don't have that great speed uh, for performance on the network side so if we go here we can choose we got uh, here four options usually when you install Veeam uh, the first option automatic selection is always on so this is the basic uh, option that most of the people have their Veeam set into and they basically never even change it. So mm, the next is direct storage access, which is to be considered one of the best options if it goes to speed wise. But of course this uh, corresponds mostly to the physical uh, Veeam machine. So if you have a server that a physical Veeam machine uh, on the rack uh, that is dedicated for uh, working with uh, Veeam backup and replication you can choose direct storage access and then you will be able to have the highest speeds uh, while providing uh, a job jobs of course if you have uh, Veeam on a virtual machine you should uh, then choose a virtual appliance this virtual appliance is basically for hypervisors so doesn't matter if it's uh, Hyper-V or is, if it's uh, vSphere or whatever uh, or Proxmox, whichever hypervisor you're gonna have your Veeam on virtual appliance uh, would be uh, I think one of the best here one of the best options here uh, of course if you have a very good internet connection as you can see recommended for 10 uh, gigs internet or faster if you choose the network option so if you want to choose network option that's fine that's up to you but just bear in mind you have to have a really good uh, speed here to choose this option so in my case uh, Veeam is, is, not, is now uh, uh, working as a, a virtual appliance because it's a virtual machine so what you can see if when I uh, cho chose virtual appliance so either if we ch uh, choose direct storage or virtual appliance those two boxes are enabled so let's go to network for 
a moment. As you can see, only this uh, second box is enabled here. So if we change the virtual appliance, we have failover to network mode if primary mode fails or is unavailable. So basically, what does what what's the option here? So if your virtual appliance fails for whatever reason, this option fails while your jobs are being done, while while Vim is working and doing. Uh, different kind of things, re restoring or whatever, sure backup. And, uh, then it's gonna basically fail over to the network, uh, to your network, and your network work, whichever it is, is gonna take care of all of your backups and all of all of your jobs and all of the tasks of V. That's why you shouldn't un you should not untick this box, because in case something happens to your primary the primary option, then you will always have the possibility of going back to the network side, which is pra practically always available because uh, your machines always have internet access, even limit limited. Okay, so I'm gonna choose a virtual appliance here. I'm just gonna leave it as virtual appliance. Okay, next connect uh, connected data stores. Well, here if you have data stores, of course you can. Choose with J manually choose uh, and select data stores here. Okay, but I'm gonna just go out of here and we are gonna add another proxy here. Because of course, if you would like to, because um, uh, this prog this proxy is a local proxy that is dedicated to me. So basically, all the jobs and everything, all the heavy lifting is being done here basically on this server. This server now does all the heavy lifting for everything. If you want to take off uh, the load uh, and at least separate some uh, some work and make this server less uh, basically less busy, you can add quite a lot of different proxies here. And then you can assign those proxies to different jobs. So for example, if you have like four different proxies here, you can have like 20 different jobs and assign those four proxies to those 20 jobs. So let's say five of those jobs are gonna be assigned to proxy number one, another five proxy number two, and so on and so on. And basically all of those four proxies are gonna take the all of the uh, processor and RAM work uh, of your main server and it's gonna be well, quite a, a helpful thing. So uh, let's add a proxy. So as you can see, we had we have here a general purpose backup proxy. It's a backup proxy for agent based uh, backups of NAS. So if you got NAS, you can choose this uh, as a backup uh, proxy option. But we are gonna choose the Hyper-V of host backup proxy because I'm uh, hosting Hyper-V. My machines are hosted in Hyper-V, that's why this option is best for me. Because uh, most of my machines that are going to be my proxies are hosted in Hyper-V. So I'm taking this. Now I'm going to be specifying which server I want to be my additional proxy. So I have a hypervisor that is called basically hypervisor. So, and as you can see, max concurrent tasks here are 16 for this particular server right let's see my DC because I also have my DC in here. Well my DC here is limited only to four concurrent tasks. So basically I will take my hypervisor which is one of my hyper V's because it has quite a lot of concurrent tasks thanks to its uh, amount of RAM and CPUs. I'm not gonna uh, well let's see here connection connection automatic detection Okay, so that's fine. We're not gonna change this here. Now we're gonna just go here. Of course, here we gonna uh, we have our internet settings, basic internet settings, of course. Okay, so what happens here? Actually, uh, this was done before, and my hypervisor already has this service. But every time you are adding a new backup proxy,
proxy or creating a new backup proxy in your heap, the transport service is going to be installed in your virtual machine that is going to be your proxy. So as you can see, it says that this this transport already exists because it already checked. Um, I have this hypervisor. I had this hypervisor uh, added previously. So let's now apply. And basically, this is how the process looks. Everything is being checked. Also checks for updates. And as you can see, now we have our backup proxy added. And this is our additional proxy. We can go to properties here. Okay. And what we can uh, do actually now once we have the backup proxy. So we can go to mm, our home. We can go to backup jobs. Let's go to virtual machines. I'm just going to create one backup. Let's say I'm going to call it just back one. Go now, now we're going to add something and I'm going to add let's say one of the machines from my hypervisor so maybe just this machine right and when we are here we got back uh, backup proxies here so we can choose a backup proxy and we are choosing off host backup proxy so we can choose the use the following backup proxy servers only and we are specifying which server we want to add here. Of course we got the failover to a, a no host backup mode if no suitable of host proxies are available. We can also have a failover option. If this option doesn't work we can always choose this option as well. So we got our backup uh, proxy mm, selected here. And here we can just select where we want to put the backup. It's going to be locally, just one of my disks here. And uh, this doesn't matter. I'm just going to, maybe I'm just going to go to advanced for a moment and change it to extreme. And now it's just going to start. So now basically what's going to be uh, what it's gonna do uh, most of the heavy lifting and work like I said is being done by the backup proxy here so the ba basically the um, virtual uh, server is now doing uh, this task so my Veeam backup is not doing anything here it's not working on this task that's why you uh, create backup proxies Of course, of course, since I actually uh, picked, since I actually uh, have picked uh, something small, because this uh, this machine is small, doesn't have quite a lot of gigs, so this job is of course fast. Well, it's not that fast. Probably would be a lot, lot faster. If it was uh, done with different kind of uh, packaging, as uh, if we want to call it, because I actually took the extreme option, so I wanted my backup to be as small as possible. Uh, but of course, that also takes quite a toll on the uh, processor. But at this point I don't care because the, all the work is being done of host so basically my Veeam is not doing anything here and the server is just working on this process. And since the server has the ability to have 16 concurrent jobs then I guess it has enough of everything to process this job quite well. As you can see 
it it is done and the backup has been finished let's just take a look test backup backups and back one there we go our backup has been created and our full backup has it doesn't even have one gig which basically my virtual machine has about 3.3 gigabytes and the full backup has only like 800 gigs here okay so I think I will conclude my video here that's how you add backup proxies and that's how you utilize them while uh, creating backup jobs as always like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one